When we open a semi-crafter, on the right-hand side, we're going to see our layer stack. And on the middle panel, we have an area where we can draw the different process masks that we're going to use for this device. The first process mask we use in this device is going to be a circle, and that's going to be used to dig a trench. The effective depth of the mask is specified by the segment number. So here we're going to specify segments 8 through 64 and then adjust any parameters that we need like the center coordinates, the radius, or even the number of vertices that are used in the polygon that actually represents the circle in the process modeling. Every mask has a particular purpose. So here we're going to use, uh, be using an edge mask to remove material. The second mask we're going to use to define a contact. Again, we use a, con uh, a circle, but here we're going to use a different mask property called change material. Change material is basically the equivalent of an etch and regrowth step, but we cheat a little bit and we simply transmute one material into another. So here we're going to say that all the algan in the affected area is going to be changed into a material we call contact one and that's going to be used for the end contact. The effective area of the mask is uh, segment number seven so it's just below the etched area that we already have. The last mask is similar to the second and is used to define the P-contact. We've defined all the process masks now so we can save the file and generate the C-Supreme input files. In the C-Supreme process simulator we're actually going to grow and process our structure. So we start by opening up the template that was created by SemiCrafter. And we're going to make some small changes to the code. First thing we're going to do is to change the name of the output file that's going to be used by Apsys. and also disable the automatic definition of polarization charges. There's another model that we can use in Apsys to handle that part of the model. We're also going to turn on some options to generate additional information necessary for ray tracing. After the process modeling is done, we can visualize the structure with cross-light view. Rotating the structure, we see our two contact regions.
and we can ver see various other quantities that have been calculated during the process modeling, such as the doping distribution. During the export, Stream has created an empty template for the device modeling. It's called main.sol. So here we're going to make a copy of this or uh, empty uh, original template and rename it so we can m make some modifications. Once we're in our uh, new template, we're going to make some modifications to it. Uh, we're going to remove some commands which are not necessary. And we're going to add some models that are needed for LED simulations. Some of the important things that need to be done here is to define the direction of the quantum well normal because this is a 3D simulation. We also have to define the interface charge using the polarization charge model command and we have to turn on the self-consistent quant self quantum well simulations. Every device simulation starts with the equilibrium calculations and after that we perturb the system by applying a, volt a bias, be it voltage, current or light. Now we can modify some settings related to the nonlinear solver. In Newton power, we can control the maximum number of iterations the solver is allowed to use, as well as the convergence criteria on the function residue and the variable tolerance. Here we start with a voltage scan, and because we cannot use a current scan straight from equilibrium. So we increase the voltage until it reaches a certain threshold current and after that we're going to switch over to a current scan. In order to improve convergence, there are several tricks that we can use. Here we're going to use a slow transient technique, which adds a little bit of displacement current to the sparse matrix. It's almost equivalent to DC, but numerically it has some, uh, uh, some effects on the convergence. Now we can simply select simulate to start the device simulation.